Hello. Just before I go off to bed, I thought I might read a story. Um, this one is Cinderella. Once upon a time, there was a young girl whose mother fell sick. Before the mother died, she told her sweet-natured daughter, Be good, and you will always be protected. Now the girl's father was rich, and he soon married again. His second wife was a haughty woman with two vile daughters who were hard of heart. No sooner was the wedding over than a new wife showed her true colours. She gave all the hard work around the house to her new stepdaughter. Every day the girl washed the pots, swept the floors and cleaned the hearth. The poor girl never complained. When the housework was done, she tucked herself away in the fireplace to keep warm among the cinders. That's why her stepsisters called her Cinderella. Yet, even in her dirty clothes, Cinderella was 100 times kinder and more beautiful than her stepsisters. It happened that the king was holding a ball and he invited all the girls in the kingdom. When the two stepsisters received their invitations, they were delighted. They spoke of nothing else and were always looking in the mirror. On the night of the ball, they shouted at Cinderella, Comb our hair, brush our shoes, fasten our corsets. Cinderella was patient and did as she was told, but she begged her stepmother to be allowed to go to the ball too. You are covered in dust and dirt and you have no fine clothes, said her stepmother. Everyone would laugh at you. The house was empty as Cinderella went about her chores and she wept as she did so. What's the matter, child? a kindly voice said. Cinderella's fairy godmother had appeared as if out of nowhere. I want... Cinderella was crying too hard to speak. You want to go to the ball? said the godmother. First go into the garden and pick me a pumpkin. Cinderella picked the plumpest pumpkin she could find. Her godmother struck the pumpkin with her wand and it changed into a golden coach. Fetch me mice for a mouse trap. As the mice dashed out of the trap, the godmother tapped each one lightly with her wand and it turned into a white horse. Soon the golden coach had six fine white horses. Next, go and see if there are any rats in the rat trap, said the godmother. A rat would make a splendid coachman. Cinderella found three fat rats on the rat trap. One had particularly large whiskers. The godmother tapped this rat with her wand and it changed into a coachman with the most magnificent mistake dash you ever did see. Finally she tapped her wand on Cinderella's rags which changed into a white dress that sparkled in the moonlight. Then she gave Cinderella the prettiest pair of glass slippers. Be home by midnight warned her godmother. If you stay one moment longer, your coach will turn into a pumpkin. Your horses to mice, your coachman to a rat, and your dress to rags. I promise, said Cinderella, and she left for the ball. At the palace, the king's son was told that a mysterious princess had arrived. He ran to meet her. The prince led Cinderella into the ballroom. Where the guests saw her, 
silence descended. The dancing stopped. The fiddlers forgot to ply their bows. Everyone gazed in wonder at this unknown beauty. Cinderella's stepsisters did not even recognise the girl in the sparkling white dress. They thought she must be a princess from far away in another kingdom. The prince took Cinderella by the hand and danced only with her and no other all night. He never let go of her hand. Suddenly, Cinderella heard the chimes of the clock, striking a quarter to twelve. Oh, she exclaimed, it's late, I must go. She made a deep curtsy to the prince. Then she ran as quickly as she could to her coach and horses to take her back home. As Cinderella rushed down the palace staircase, one foot slipped out of its glass slipper. She hurried on, leaving it behind. The next day, the prince made an announcement. I shall marry the girl whose foot fits this glass slipper. The prince travelled the kingdom, trying the slipper on all the princesses. Then all the duchesses, then all the ladies, but the slipper fit none of them. As the stepsisters waited their turn, they spoke of nothing else. Cinderella washed, swept and cleaned. At last the prince brought the slipper for the sisters to try on. First it was the elder sister's turn. She pushed and pushed, but the slipper did not fit. It fits perfectly, said her mother. It does not, said the prince. Then the younger sister tried. She pushed and pushed, but the slipper didn't fit. It fits perfectly, said her mother. It does not, said the prince. Have you no other daughter? No, said the stepmother, only a servant who cleans the kitchen and sweeps the floor. I wish to see her, requested the prince. Oh no, the stepmother replied, she is much too dirty. But the prince insisted. Cinderella washed the ashes from her face and curtsied before the prince. She sat on a stool and slipped her foot into the glass slipper. It fit like a glove. At that very moment, Cinderella's fairy godmother appeared as if out of nowhere. She tapped Cinderella's rags with her wand and at once they turned into a white dress that sparkled in the sunshine. When Cinderella rose up, the prince knew her immediately. You are my true bride, he cried. Cinderella's stepmother and stepsisters were horrified and became pale with rage. But the prince had eyes only for Cinderella, whom he thought more beautiful than ever. Cinderella and her prince went in a horse-drawn carriage to the palace, where they were married and lived happily ever after.